You're watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei, still to come on our program. A Russian developed the COVID-19 vaccine out of the pipeline. How effective can it be? Is it going to be the breakthrough needed to turn the tide against the pandemic? Some answers from someone directly involved in the work right after the break. Welcome back. You're still watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei. The first Russian produced the COVID-19 vaccine developed by Moscow's Gamalaya Institute received the regulatory approval from the Russian Health Ministry. President Vladimir Putin said on Tuesday it is the first country to register a vaccine. The Russian president said the vaccine had gone through all the necessary checks and one of his daughters did take it. The speed highlights Russia's determination for an effective product, but has stirred concern from some that it may be putting national prestige before science and safety. Earlier, I talked to Kirill Dmitriev, the CEO of Russian direct investment fund that bankrolled the effort on vaccine efforts and the importance of international cooperation. Here's our exclusive interview. We are joined by Kirill Dmitriev, the CEO of Russia Direct Investment Fund. Kirill, good to see you again. Yes, good to see you. Thank you for having me. You have a lot of work these days related to COVID-19, the fight, and also the prevention against it. Tell me more about different fronts, uh, testing, drugs, and vaccines. Some brief information. Yes, so basically we focused on three elements of fight against coronavirus. It's very good testing, and our test systems already were sold to 13 million tests outside of Russia. And for example, they're used in all of the Moscow airports because they give very precise results in 30 minutes, which allows to increase existing testing uh, throughput. Also on drugs, we supported a drug called Avifavir uh, that already is used very widely as antiviral against COVID in Russia and has also been bought by 15 other nations. Uh, we are going to be launching a website about the vaccine called uh, sputnikvaccine.com, which will share information about vaccine. So we believe today is a very important, very positive news in our joint fight, the fight of the whole humanity mm -hmm. against coronavirus, because the first approved vaccine is a very, very important joint human step forward. Mm. The vaccines, uh, many of them, the most important candidates, according to WHO, have been entering into the third stage trial. About the newest one coming from Russia? Well, we already finished very successfully two uh, phases, and following Russian regulation, all of the procedures were met for approval. What's very important is that our approach using adenovirus vector to deliver the spike of coronavirus have been validated by other. Uh, people. So, for example, Cancino is used as adenovirus number five. Uh, Johnson and Johnson is using adenovirus number 26, and Russia actually is using both adenovirus number five and adenovirus number 26. Mm -hmm. And we believe it's the joint use of those delivery mechanisms that will lead to very good, effective results and long-term immunity. What's also very important is that this approach has been studied by our Gamalea Institute for the last six years. Yeah. So thousands of people have received uh, this approach before, and uh, Russia vaccine really focused on safety and efficiency. Mm. But uh, as you may know, Kirill, there are a lot of issues regarding a vaccine, complicated process, particularly once an immunity is being developed, how long it will last, that that will have a lot of uh, impact on whether a uh, vaccine is successful. So what about the antibodies, the length of antibodies, and also the function of antibodies developed as a result of the vaccine so far? Oh, you're absolutely right. And that is the biggest concern, that the immunity will not last for too long. So our vaccine demonstrated both the antibody response and what's called T-cell response. We believe that for longer immunity, too short are needed because antibodies would start being reduced very quickly for just one shot. So we believe it's important to have two shots, and it's very important to use two different vectors to deliver the shot. Because if you use the same vector a second time, it's just much less effective second time. So we believe, based on the studies our Gamalea Institute has done, that Russian vaccine will last for more than one year, hopefully two years. But of course, we are doing lots of detailed research on the long-lasting 
attacks of, of the immunity of the vaccine, and that's a key issue, as you said. It reminds me of uh, some of the research being done around the world about a quote-unquote cocktail of antibodies to address uh, uh, the uh, immunity period problem. Uh, having said that, though, uh, what about the testing of the vaccine? When you go to the third stage trial, of course, you have a lot of uh, uh, positive cases inside Russia that you can uh, work on with. Uh, however, uh, how would you make sure that this vaccine could address uh, uh, problems that are existing uh, in different parts of the world? As you may know, some of the virus are coming from different origins. Yes, exactly. So we are big partners with China. We are big partners with other nations to jointly work on the vaccine, to jointly produce the vaccine. We expect that five other nations will be producing Russian vaccine. We will have clinical trials in many nations. For what the are these countries? So we will have clinical trials in United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Philippines, and maybe Brazil. So it will be widely tested um, around the world. And we believe it's this partnership approach that's very much needed. We really benefited from working very close with China on a number of issues. And we believe that countries need to be together, not divided in this fight. Because, of course, we want to protect Russian citizens, just as China is protecting Chinese citizens. Uh, but we also believe Chinese vaccine, Russian vaccine, other vaccines that are out there are going to be protecting humans. So we believe there will be five, seven vaccines by the end of the year yeah. available to the world. And it's very important that all of them are developed, tested, and supported. Right. Uh, you talk about the cooperation with China. Can you be uh, curious a bit more specific? Which area, to what stage already the cooperation is happening? And also, what kind of results can we expect in the near future, the end of year, as you said? Well, we definitely benefited from the first days of the pandemic when we were informed by Chinese side about the pandemic. We worked very closely jointly on tests and uh, jointly with BGI really uh, benefited from our joint cooperation on tests. We received lots of clinical trial research on the Abifavir drug that we later launched in Russia. And on vaccine also, there has been lots of exchanges with Chinese scientists and lots of cooperation. So I think we see China cooperation in many uh, aspects of uh, health industry. We believe the China vaccines that are being developed are very good uh, and will have very good results. And I think it's a good example for how countries can work together, support each other, mm. rather than trying to attack each other in this very important uh, fight against COVID. And I wanted to use this analogy that animals, uh, you know, when they go to drink to a water hole, they do not fight and live in peace. I actually looked it up, and it turns out that animals do attack each other on water holes. Mm. But hopefully we could be better than animals. We believe that there should be a truce on politics around uh, coronavirus, a truce on politics around vaccine development, and we should all work on those vaccines, all of the nations, to really save our people. Do you see the role of WHO in this regard and international cooperation various platforms? Well, definitely, and information about Russian vaccine has been provided to WHO, and we are sharing information about our vaccine on our site, which is sputnikvaccine.com. I'm publishing an op-ed today about the vaccine that was not published in most of the Western media publications. So we <laughs> want to publish information about Russian vaccine and have people learn and know. So I think it's very important to cooperate with all of the bodies that are out there. I think those bodies need to be respectful of scientific research, of accomplishments of different scientists. We have great academician uh, Ginsburg uh, and his uh, uh, also deputy, Mr. Logonov, who developed this vaccine. They're great scientists. And I think it's important that we support our great scientists in different countries. Mm. A uh, contrast probably to a lot of countries, we have noticed that the United States have been playing geopolitical card even in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, for example, the Secretary of Health's visit to Taiwan, which is supposed to be a very sensitive issue between China and the United States. Now, I don't want to concentrate on geopolitics in this conversation with you because I know you are investing in a lot of scientific research projects. So tell me about how important it is now to play with the fire of politics politics and geopolitics when we have lives on the line? Well, I think it's very important that it's very clear that people of all of the nations in the world want to have a vaccine, want to be safe, 
uh, and want to have protection. And I think it's very super important to separate people uh, from some of the politicians who really are focused on divisions and focused on attacking. Uh, but once again, we will publish our research in all of the scientific uh, key publications in, in August. Uh, we believe that nations should work together so data will be shared. And we believe that artificial barriers to knowledge or really unfair competition uh, is just negative for the world. And I think we've seen too many examples of attempts to do unfair competition to tarnish reputation of Russian vaccine or Chinese vaccine recently. And those are very negative steps. I think they are not moving us forward in the fight against COVID. Mm. What do you make of uh, trying to suggest that there is kind of uh, a supply to one country or certain groups of one country first before it should be available to the other countries, whether they are the ones that invented the vaccine or they are the ones uh, uh, that have been supporting to invent the vaccine. Uh, what do you make of these kind of arguments? Well, we believe that vaccines should be shared very uh, widely. I think it's very important, and as you know, we will be uh, producing in five nations. Uh, those nations will be producing for themselves and for other nations. We received inquiry from 20 nations. We are working on some humanitarian aid uh, projects with some of our partners in the poorest countries. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very important that vaccine is distributed broadly, that different countries have access to it. And we showed this example with Avifavir, our drug. So we produced it in Russia, but we also delivered it to 15 other nations. Mm. I think capability to deliver to the world quickly uh, is very important. And in contrast, for example, 90% of Remdesivir, the U.S. drug has been purchased by the U.S. So other countries are really left out, not being able to purchase the drug. We believe it's very important to be fair uh, and different countries need to have access to the vaccine and we are working very hard on this. We know China is as well. Production is a very important component of this uh, whole chain of issues. How to make sure that production is already happening before uh, we have the final candidates for the successful vaccine is a mind-boggling issue and who to work with for the production and how production can be transported efficiently to different parts of the world without you know, limits of geopolitics and others. These are mind-boggling questions much going beyond the scientific research, uh, Kirill. Yeah, well, we are focused on a very practical approach. So first of all, we will be producing in Russia we store our portfolio companies called R Farm and Allium. And secondly, we are building those partnerships with different countries in the world to produce. Uh, we already reached agreement with a number of those nations. We would be open to also produce in China. Uh, and I think those production capabilities are important. So we already are producing Russian vaccine. Russian people will start getting vaccinated already in August with a massive vaccination starting in October. And you're absolutely right that production is a big component and we are open to partnership with different nations to produce a uh, Russian vaccine. We're also open to produce vaccine from some other nations as well. Mm. It is not just about testing the drugs and the vaccines. It's also about prevention and control at a time when there are a lot of uncertainties. So Kirill, Russia had been under test about its capability for prevention and control this time since COVID-19 broke out. Where is it to go next? Well, I think you are right that social distancing and wearing masks are very important. And actually, Russia was acting very toughly on this, also using some of the methodology that China developed. So we're actually able to prevent the major outbreak, and Moscow mayor has been very tough on COVID with very strong social restriction measures. And I think we are moving to the world where it doesn't make sense to put people on social uh, quarantine at home. But it does make sense to keep distance, it does make sense to wear masks, and it does make sense to be careful, particularly indoors. So I think it's a combination of tests, drugs, vaccine, and social distancing measures, mm. but without quarantine so that economic activity can resume. Mm. Kirill Dmitriev, the CEO of Russia Direct Investment Fund, what a pleasure. All the best to the vaccines you, you so are much. working on. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, you can certainly search our program World Insight or check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.